week number four, college football preview, ready to rock and roll. And let's start off with this one. Which game this week is going to get the highest TV ratings? Now, some of you care about this. Some of you do not. Here are my guesses on it. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. I think that Wisconsin at Ohio State is going to get the highest TV ratings of the week because I think this thing's going to be closer than people assume it will be. Florida at Tennessee could end up getting quite a few ratings. It's certainly going to help if that game ends up close. But with that being a double-digit spread, it could be tricky. Tennessee could jump out to a big lead. If that happens, I would imagine probably going to lose part of that audience. Notre Dame at North Carolina. That's a 2.30 game on ABC. 2.30 Central, of course. God's time zone. But yes, uh, North Carolina-Notre Dame could be a close game. And if that is the case, obviously there's a lot of people that like Notre Dame. A lot of people that hate Notre Dame. Uh, That's two big brands. Could be interesting. Uh, Number four for me, Arkansas at Texas A&M. It's on ESPN. It is a Saturday night game. Uh, Again, keep it close. Oregon at Washington State is going to be on Fox in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, that one, Washington State always seems to do pretty good numbers for whatever reason. Uh, Maryland at Michigan is my last one here. That's my number six on this. Uh, I think just the Michigan brand itself is going to be enough to get them in, at least in the top six um, because I don't imagine that game's going to be close. I just, I just don't believe that that one's going to be close. All right, which games are going to be the most exciting or the closest this week? Uh, Duke and Kansas, I think, is going to be incredibly exciting. I think you're going to see some big plays. I think you're going to see uh, a close ball game. Obviously, if you watch the BetUS TV show, you know my thoughts on on who will cover this one. Uh, but Duke and Kansas, uh, obviously, two pretty new coaches. Mike Oko in his first year, Lance Leipold in his second you got two stud quarterbacks, Riley Leonard and Jalen Daniels. I think that's going to be awesome. Uh, Baylor at Iowa State could be interesting. Like, a Baylor, obviously, huge year last year. Dave Aranda, of course, just rocking and rolling. They lost a bunch of guys. They still got talent on that team. Iowa State, kind of the same situation. Lost a bunch of guys. It appears that the new guys have developed pretty well inside of the Matt Campbell's culture. That's going to be an interesting one. TCU at SMU. If you want to see big plays, yeah, just just watch Max Duggan throw the football. Just watch. It's going to be awesome. Uh, That's an early game. I I think that that one's going to be insane. It's Sonny Dykes going back to SMU. Uh, There's, of course, all the crap from last year when Gary Patterson was accusing SMU players of knocking over Jerry Kill or, like, hitting Jerry Kill, whatever it was. It was bonkers, and there was no video evidence. Like, the video showed that nothing like that happened, and he doubled down on it. And then, of course, he got fired, and now they've got Sonny Dykes, who they took from SMU, and that becomes interesting because Sonny Dykes and Rhett Lashley, of course, coached with each other at SMU. So, again, interesting, interesting game. Notre Dame-UNC, I think, could be really close. Uh, I've got no idea what to expect from Notre Dame's offense in this one because you know that North Carolina's defense has holes. But also, like we haven't seen anybody stop North Carolina's offense. Does Notre Dame have the dudes to be able to do that? That's that's going to be interesting. Arkansas, excuse me, no, Arizona at Cal, I think could be really close. Arizona has looked good. Are, are they good enough to go up against Justin Wilcox's defense and put up points? I mean, we saw Mississippi State's defense hold them to 17. It, no, Wilcox does not run that same 3-3-5 that Zach Arnett does, but it, they still know how to stop some of these high-flying uh, pass options and whatnot. I wonder what Jaden DeLar is going to do because sometimes you put him in a tricky situation, he'll throw the ball to the wrong team. Uh, I think Arizona can keep that thing close, but but we'll we'll see. I think that's a very exciting game. Arkansas, Texas A&M, we don't need to say a whole lot about that one. Uh, Sam Pittman circles this one every single year. A&M has not exactly shown the ability to throw the football. Well, throwing the football is Arkansas's only defensive weakness, really. Uh, That could be very interesting. And then if you want some fireworks, figure out how to get the Pac-12 network before Saturday night because I think USC and Oregon State are going to put up a bunch of points. I don't think either defense is really good. I don't think either offense is going to turn the ball over. So if that's the case, I think you're just going to see a lot of points just up and down the field all night. Which teams have the most to gain and the most to lose? Now That is a tricky one here. Um... The most to gain, most to lose for me. First off, North Carolina. Uh, you got a chance to beat Notre Dame and be undefeated going into ACC play? 
after losing Sam Howell and all that, uh, they get Josh Downs back this week. And just saying, uh, Iowa State with a chance to move to four and zero a year after losing all those play. Everybody thought that Iowa State was going to come back down to earth. And obviously, they came back down to earth last year with a seven and five record in the regular season, but uh, they were quote unquote playoff contenders last year. The year before that, they made it to a a Fiesta Bowl. They were in the Big Twelve title game. Like all these different things that Iowa State was was amping up for, they got. A bunch of the seniors out of the way. They bring in Hunter Deckers. They got Xavier uh, Hutchinson doing things. The running game has not been great. Don't get me wrong. But, like, they got a chance to be 4-0 going to undefeated Kansas next week. I mean, that's massive. Marshall at Troy. Both of these teams need to get up off the mat in the worst way. Marshall, of course, with that big upset over Notre Dame. Then they come back home and they get beat outright by Bowling Green in overtime. Yeah, you you need to go on the road and find a way to beat Troy here. But Troy also losing on a Hail Mary at App State. Uh, Troy is also getting some guys back this week that they did not have available last week. That's going to be interesting. Both of those need a win to stay in the Sun Belt race here. Uh, Arkansas at Texas A&M, most to gain, most to lose for both of those. A&M cannot afford another loss. Not right now. They, They got some big things on the horizon. You cannot afford a loss to Arkansas. Same regard, Arkansas uh, starts out the season pretty well. You don't want to lose this game before you have to face Alabama next week, right? You don't want a three-game winning streak to turn into a two-game losing streak. And that's not to say that they're going to lose to Alabama, but just saying you lose this one, all of a sudden the prospects for an upset next week in Fayetteville don't look as good. Um, Tennessee and Florida, both of those with the most to gain, most to lose. Florida, obviously you started off with a fantastic fantastic win over Utah at home. Uh, the last two games have not appeared so well. I mean, almost getting beat by USF at home, not good. Uh, along with that, you've also got uh, the loss to Kentucky. Tennessee, of course, the offense left a little bit to be desired against Pitt. Uh, both of these teams need a win here in a really bad way. At Tennessee, I think they, they want to continue this hype like the Josh Heupel hype. And you need a win here to do that, especially with college game day coming, et cetera. Uh, and the last one here, Baylor, Iowa State. I mean, well, no, 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 Baylor, I guess, is the other one. You've already lost a game. You only lost two out of 14 last year. So if you're Baylor, you don't want to equal your loss total in the first four games, especially heading into conference play. I mean, that's just it. You don't want to start out 0-1 in the conference, uh, you got to find a way to get a win at Iowa State here uh, if you're going to do anything in the Big 12, for sure. Uh, the most likely 10-point-plus underdog outright winner. So uh, the double-digit underdog winner that can win outright this weekend. I got three of them. Take a, take a little money line shot on, on all three of these. Louisiana Tech, plus 13.5. That's uh, money line is plus 425 at South Alabama. Look, South Alabama went to Central Michigan and won, went to UCLA, and was that close, got beat on a last-second field goal. Now they're coming back home against a team in Louisiana Tech that has shown that they can sling the football. It took them a little while to get the right quarterback set up in Sonny Cumbie's offense, but they are going to take chances. They're going to take some shots, and if your offense is not clicking, if you come back home and think you're going to be comfortable, and they, Louisiana Tech might have a thing or two to say. So keep an eye on that one. Uh, my second one here, Southern Miss, plus 13 at Tulane. Tulane coming off of their first ever P5 win under Willie Fritz. Situationally, this one makes a whole lot of sense. Zach Wilkie is, of course, going to be starting again for Southern Miss, but Ty Keyes is going to be able to come in there and uh, give some relief, etc. Will Hall is going to do some fun stuff, and you know that Will Hall's offense is going to be a lot of fun. Will Hall was the offensive coordinator at Tulane. These two coaching staffs know each other. They know what they're doing. 13 points. Mm, Southern Miss plus 400 right there. That's going to be tricky. And then finally, I'm putting this one on here just to say that I I called it if it happens. Do I believe it's going to happen? No. Do I think there's a chance? Outside possibility. Wisconsin, plus 19. They are plus 700. 
at Ohio State. All of the shine has been taken off of this game. And, and the reason it was taken off of this game is because Washington State lost at home to, excuse me, Wisconsin lost at home to Washington State. Yes, I, I get it, right? A team that lost to Washington State at home probably is not going to go on the road and beat Ohio State, especially at night, especially in the black jer- or black yeah black jerseys, black helmets, whatever. But Jim Leonard's defense, I, I think that he can find a way. I mean, we have seen now that Ohio State's offense, you can find ways to maybe shut them down a little bit. We saw Notre Dame do it, and I don't think they're as good as Wisconsin is. On top of that, if you get a performance out of Graham Mertz where he doesn't turn the football over in critical, critical situations, I think Wisconsin can run the ball on these guys. Uh, This is exactly what we saw with Michigan last year. Now, don't get me wrong. I think Michigan last year is better than Wisconsin this year, etc. But just saying, this team is built like one of those teams that Ohio State can have trouble with Maybe we pay attention to this one. Uh, Last thing on the docket here for the previews, the G5 games of the week. And write my times down. Uh, Marshall at Troy, I think, is going to be very, very interesting. This is is a fun spot. Um, Because both of them coming off of last-second losses, Marshall in overtime, Troy on a Hail Mary at App State. Um, Both of them need a win. I think this one's going to be a lot of fun. It's on NFL Network. Toledo at San Diego State. This is the first time San Diego State has been a a non-P5 underdog in a non-conference game in, I think, 35 games is what they said. I mean, it's been a very, very long time. Uh, so Toledo, you know, getting blasted by Ohio State last week. Now they get to go to San Diego State and face that 335. San Diego State's got some things going on. James Madison at App State. I don't know of any team that has had a better run in the month of September than App State. I mean, yes, obviously, really weird losing that game to North Carolina at home in week one. But week two, you go down to Texas A&M and you get a win. You come back home, you get college game day. You get Troy, who's an in, uh, not in-state, excuse me, uh, uh, in-conference opponent. And you win on a Hail Mary on the last play of the game. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Now, of course, James Madison, who is, uh, who's who's going to have their first year in FBS this year. James Madison looks good. That spread's only about seven points. Keep an eye out for that situationally. Southern Miss at Tulane is another G5 game of the week. Obviously, I talked about that. Will Hall and Willie Fritz, of course, coached together at Tulane. And then this one I'm tossing in here, UNLV at Utah State. Utah State, I don't know what is going on. With Blake Anderson's program, they have not been able to replicate their 2021 success when they won the Mountain West. UNLV, on the other hand, Marcus Arroyo's bunch is figuring it out. They are figuring it out. Brumfeld, the quarterback, pretty good. Ricky White, the transfer wide receiver from Michigan State, he can take the top off the defense. And, of course, Robbins at running back. This is a potent, potent team. I think the market might be missing on these guys. Just saying. Uh, UNLV at Utah State. If Utah State can find a way to have some success here, yeah, this could be a really, really interesting game. Uh, if it's not, it's still it's another coming out party for UNLV. So, I mean, and, and last week was really close to that because they beat the absolute breaks off of North Texas. Just smoked them. Smoked them. All right. Uh, let's hit two more ads. In the, well, one more ad. I guess whatever. The second ad. Blah. You guys get it. Uh, and then we're doing our college football picks against the spread. Don't forget... Join the picks contest. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Hit that contest button. Make sure that you are signed up. The winner each week gets a $25 Amazon gift card. And, of course, a $50 free play from BetUS if you have an account over there. So make sure that you are signed up. Winningcureseverything.com. And then hit the contest page. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.